Welcome back. It's time for us to talk all things money. Now, shopping is a part of our, in fact, it's a big part of our everyday <laughs> life, whether it is for necessities or the occasional splurge on the nicer things in life. But given our financially conscious state of mind, I thought I'd open up the conversation to you at home and Raul here in studio <laughs> to talk about our shopping weaknesses and how we budget accordingly. Oh. The big question is for you about shopping. In fact, Raul, is budgeting for big expensive things something you do? Um, I never used to. I would just like kind of live every day as it is and then just sort of figure, figure things out as you go. But you start to realize you want certain things and budgeting actually became like a really cool incentive and a goal, almost like a level of achievement to unlock these things within your life. And I think when it came to certain things that, especially for me, being young, I didn't have a lot of money, I couldn't afford things. It taught me to almost gain this weird independence. You know what I mean? Like when you can afford something, there's this weird empowerment that comes with it when it's like, yeah, I earned that with my own money and my own hard work. But budgeting is so essential to do that because along the way I realized if I didn't budget, I would never get to that point in time because I'd run to the shop and buy sweets or just splurge it on something silly. And this is the young me that luckily learned along the way. I don't know about you, but is it something you incorporate? Well, I, th I think the big thing for me is like, when it is a guilty pleasure mm. not to buy it on credit, like oh, I, yeah. I don't wanna How buy it. How easy is it to do that though, to right? To do that. So I mean, if, if, if the cash is low and I really see this beautiful dress, I need to wait till the cash is full because mm. that's not something I'll buy on credit. But I think we can also kick off with one of these guilty pleasures when it comes for you to buying something for yourself. What do you spoil yourself with? Is it something, is it clothing? Is it a gadget? Is it perhaps, you know, some something for for yourself, for you the know, house? It, well, I think definitely, I, I didn't have many reasons to splurge back in the day. It was just about like survival, right? And then uh, you grow up and you start like thinking about material things like just a pair of shoes that I've always wanted because I see my friends wearing it and I want to look cool. But things have changed quite a bit now. For me, it's more about spending money on, let's say, experiences, which is very important to me. But now I find myself, I don't know, maybe I'm getting old because I love buying things for the house. Yeah. <laughs> like I see uh, <laughs> plants, especially, yeah. Come into my place and it's like a jungle. I just like any plant I see, I will buy it. And a pot plant, anything day correlated. I think there was an interior designer within me that that has just come to life nowadays and I'm just loving just sprucing things up because at the same time it's almost like an investment. You're investing in your space, you're investing in that 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 good quality like environment that you're creating for yourself. So yeah. that is my kryptonite right now. Plants, pot plants and anything for the house, you name it, it's there. <laughs> what I, about you? I've been saying the same. I've been cheating on fashion with furniture but I've also Cheating had on to, fashion with furniture, I like that I've, I've had to stop myself because you see all these beautiful pieces and but I have to ask myself, where is this going to go? I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been going for the oh, yeah. minimal approach. I don't like clutter, mm. but I do mm. love random things. And I'm like, there's no space for it. So there's no point in buying it. But I like that because you know what it's incentivizing me for? And I, I, I get you because it's now just bringing this point of like, I need more space, so maybe I need to work towards a bigger house one day, you know what I mean? So maybe the goal gets bigger. Maybe there's a silver lining there, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to come back to that first question when it comes to budgeting mm. for the big things, that for me is a big yes. Yes, no, 100%. I think budgeting, I think planning especially because when you realize what you can actually do just by putting a plan in place, you can achieve a lot. I mean, something as small as like a really expensive dress, something as small as like a plant or even like a vehicle or a house, if you plan correctly and you put a budget in place, it is so much more achievable. You'll be surprised also at how much money we waste when we don't take account of it. So putting yeah. the budget in place gives you a sense of accountability and gives you a reason to not waste that money like we so easily tend to do. Yeah, well, I'm saving now to redo the bathroom. So, nice. So, so that, that first, you, you know, you need to set up your budget, you yes. save for it, yeah. and then only will the fun really begin, the oh, best yeah. and the fun. And you're gonna enjoy it and feel so much more proud about it because it's like, I'm not paying this off on credit, I earned this, I did this, mine. Done. <laughs> First safe for it. Now the next question, has the rising costs and inflation changed how you shop? Ooh. That's the question. Have you noticed a change in your shopping behavior? Oh yeah, I don't know, I, like to, it's not a great term, but like I wouldn't say a cheapskate, but definitely looking at everything in terms of value. I, I, I used to be someone that, I mean, it's so easy to buy things that are cheap. Everything I'm doing now, it's all about 
is this going to add value? Is it in my life? Is it with my emotion? Is it with the investment I'm making at my house? It's all about value for me. And I think that's something that's been so much more pertinent, especially through what we've been through and how easily you can find yourself in a situation where you no longer have the income that you're so used to. I think it's so, so much more important to look at things from a perspective of, is it really gonna add value? Do I need this or do I just want it? And that's an important question. I think if you did that with everything you did in the shop, you'd find yourself walking away with only a third of the items that you thought you'd wanted, you'd realize, well, I don't actually need this. I want it, but I don't need it. It's not going to add value. So that's what I do with my shopping behavior. I, I go with a list mm -hmm. and I just get what's needed on the list. I yes, don't, don't shop deviate. Free. I don't shop freely and just add what I think I'm going to cook because yeah. that doesn't help. And then something else I love to do is to capitalize on loyalty points. You know, you swipe all those uh, cards yeah. and then you really do get to enjoy a bit more with all the benefits that come very with true, that. Very true, That is a good point. I need to, I need to work on that actually a little bit better. Thank you for that. Sign up for every card you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well look, if I told you that you can get cash back on your next shopping trip, would you take it? Well, Nedbank American Express card holders earn cash back at select stores and are widely accepted at a variety of clothing, decor, and homeware retailers nationwide. I mean, That's it's fun. one easy way to guarantee some extra cash back in your pocket and we all could do with that right we do we all can and if you have any other tips on how you've tried to make better money choices on your shopping trips then please share your comments with us online we would love to get you part of this conversation and get you started and also share some of your words of wisdom on air this coming friday so let us know how you shop smart <laughs> james is on a long overdue holiday all because he chose to invest in an electronic Optimum Plus account. <sighs> yes, seriously. <laughs> Be like James. Open a NetBank electronic Optimum Plus account and get an effective interest rate of up to 12.4%.